Wow. It's good to be here. You know, the uh, frustration I have is that we all know we need training programs, right? And most of us up here don't have a clue about how actually to implement it. Uh, you all have real world experience or the benefit of uh, years of studying. And I uh, would like us to have some way where the folks who have to do it and have some skin in the game, which is employers and ambitious young people who want to get trained, uh, can get into a program that's meaningful. And it seems to me that it does take a, a, a design, has to include like labor, because uh, there's a real interest labor has in having uh, young people get into the trades. Uh, it clearly can involve community college because that's where our young people uh, who can't, uh, who have aspirations, but, but oftentimes lower incomes go to try to take that next step. And it obviously has to include uh, the employers because uh, if employers, uh, if employers don't want to waste their time. They, they really need workers. So I, I just want to ask you if there's some way where we could accomplish the training that is absolutely essential uh, and do it in a, in a way better than we can prescriptively from here. And I'll, I'll go with you, Dr. Beach. By the way, you're in the Coolidge Foundation? I, I am indeed, sir. So you've because, been to Metropolitan Plymouth, Vermont. Uh, I, indeed, I have visited Plymouth Notch with you. Uh, Population 400. <laughs> Calvin we, Coolidge. It we, was great uh, to see you. Right. Go ahead, I'll let you start with uh, well, I, your, I just wanted to your say, Vermont credibility. Yeah, so. well, thank, thank you very much for my association now with Vermont. I, I expect citizenship soon. Uh, uh, it, so there are a couple of things that I think we ought to do. First off, uh, I sponsored a study th through the state of Minnesota when I was commissioner to find out whether state data, which is often richer than federal data, it's surprising, could be used to study people as they go into employment and out of employment and into new jobs in, in, in their, their life cycle. So, so we need to build a, a, a way to look at a, a person's whole life of employment. I think that's really, it's called a longitudinal study. It's, it's not terribly difficult to do, but you have to do it with driver's license records and we don't have access to that. And the secondly, the oldest piece of, of job training legislation still has one program left in it. And it's called the, the Wagner-Pizer Act. Uh, the employment service provision could be more exploited than it is, which is to give information to workers about what is happening in the private sector. Now, that, that can happen like in community colleges, yeah, right? I mean, I know students are really interested in getting that. But what about this partnership idea? Because I, as I mentioned, I just don't see how this happens with uh, out of partnership. Do you want to start, President Hartzell? Sure, if I may. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman and uh, uh, Representative. So I don't think there's any question that the work that the, Fed, the federal government and the states do to that require, and, and frankly, our industry standards, where there are licensed professionals, require all of us, whether it's the trainer, the employer, um, and other partners, which could be state government, could be um, our unions, and certainly our K-12 partners, come together to identify what are the job needs, not only today, but in the future, because our employers are telling us what they need. Uh, we use BLS, BLS data, but frankly, that's, that's historic. It's, it's not as much as, as um, uh, predicting or telling us where we're going. So you have to have employers, and frankly, employers come to us to do the training. So there's always a partnership with employers. Um, so by requiring our advisory committees, our professional organizations for licensing that tell us what to do, what, what the skills and the, the competencies are that our, our learners need at any point in their career, by making us all come together um, to apply for grants, to utilize our resources, um, whether it's shared facilities. Uh, so we, we, there's a great deal of oversight from our... My but how lucky, do we make it work yeah. better? I mean, we got to get more folks trained. I mean, including in the trades, you know, we, there is some money in the, in the Inflation okay. Reduction Act to train uh, on energy efficiency. That was something quite important to a lot of us, especially to me. But, you know, if you want to... What they're saying these days, if you want a plumber, you got to marry one, right? So there's an issue here about getting people who could have a really good, well-paying career that gave them the option of staying where they live. Uh, Mr. Eichhorn. Okay, that's probably the thing I focus on the most often. Um, state of New Mexico, you know, we're rural, 
and we've got two million people in a great big state. The one thing we've done well is we'll partner up with Navajo Tech. They've got two sites on the Navajo Nation. We get in there, we work with these young people, we bring them in. The UA and Navajo Tech started a plumbing program there because a lot of these young men and women have no idea what they're gonna do once they graduate high school or a community college. This gives these young people the opportunity. They say, you know, I don't wanna leave home yet. I'm helping mom, I'm helping grandma. You know, once I get a real job, I can help them a little further. And if there's some governmental assistance to get them through this program, they go through the community colleges, they come out with a certificate or a degree, which is phenomenal. They get the basic training. They come to us with direct entry and advanced placement. So instead of starting out as a first year apprentice that doesn't need to know anything, they come in as a second year apprentice because they've got their basics, they've got their CPR, they've got a bunch of the, the things needed. So that model works really well. If at 18 years old, I had no idea what I was gonna do with my life. I'm 47 and I still don't know what I'm gonna do with my life. I still don't know what I, I'm gonna do when I grow up. But at 18, if some of these young individuals, they don't have to be young, anybody, can go to a community college and say, maybe I'm interested in electrical, maybe I'm interested in welding, maybe I'm interested in plumbing. They go in the weld shop and they burn the heck out of themselves, they're done. They wanna become an electrician or a plumber. So this gives them an opportunity to not go into a program and fail. This allows them to think, okay, I don't mind getting wet, but I don't like being shocked or burnt, so I'm gonna be a plumber. So this gives some of these people a great opportunity to think, I had the opportunity to go to CNM, now I wanna be a plumber, and then they get direct entry into several apprenticeship programs. Thank you. Thank you.